Hello everyone, I am Rajiv Saxena, Associate Professor, Smriti College of Pharmaceutical Education, Indore. In today's video lecture, we will discuss about the evaluation of disinfectant. In the previous video, we have discussed about various disinfection process and we have also discussed about the ideal properties of a disinfectant and various factors that affects the process of disinfection. We have also studied about various classes of disinfectant which are most commonly used in any pharmaceutical industry or in any hospital. So in the today's video lecture, the topic of discussion is evaluation of a disinfectant. We know that during the study of various chemical classes of dis disinfectant, we have gone through various categories like Phenol and phenolics are there, halogens are there, cautionary ammonium compounds are there, heavy metals are there. There are so many different categories of the disinfectants are actually available. And every day, a new research on the generation of a new disinfectant is actually taking place. But if you are having any new disinfectant or an unknown disinfectant or any test disinfectant and if you want to evaluate the efficiency of that new disinfectant, definitely some laboratory methods are necessary. So in today's video lecture, we'll discuss about the laboratory method which is actually called as Riddle-Walker test. Actually, there are so many methods are available, including Riedel Walker test, Chick Martin test, Use Dilution test, and Kelsey Site test. But today we are going to discuss about the Riedel Walker test. Riedel Walker test is a very common test which is adopted in any uh, microbiological laboratory for the evaluation of the efficiency of any unknown disinfectant. Now, coming to the principle of the RW, that is Riedel Walker test. Now, the Riddle Walker test is based on the calculation of the effectiveness of the test disinfectant as compared to that of the phenol. Means here we are actually comparing the efficiency of any unknown or any test disinfectant as compared to that of the phenol. That's why the Riddle Walker test is also called as phenol coefficient test. In the previous video, under the classification of different uh, chemicals which act as a disinfectant, we have discussed about the phenol. Phenol is a very good disinfectant and though it is irritating to our skin and it is having some objectionable odor and 1% solution of the phenol is considered as the most effective solution, but as compared to that of any other disinfectant it has been obtained, it has been observed by many researchers that phenol actually work as a very excellent disinfectant. So in case of the riddle walker test or is in case of the phenol coefficient test, basically we are comparing the efficiency of the unknown or the test disinfectant as compared to that of the phenol. And once we go through the practical or once we perform the riddle walker test, at the end we'll get some value that is actually called as riddle walker coefficient. And if the value of riddle walker coefficient is greater than 1, then it is considered that the unknown or the test disinfectant will have a better efficiency as compared to that of the phenol. But if the value of riddle walker coefficient is less than 1, then it is considered that it is poor as compared to that of the phenol. So, coming to the laboratory protocol, that how we can perform the riddle walker test in our laboratory. So, for performing the riddle walker test, the first thing that we have to do is the preparation of the culture broth. So, we need to weigh different components like we need meat extract 20 grams, we need peptone 20 grams, we need sodium chloride 10 grams and water up to 1000 ml and then we have to maintain the pH to 7.6. So, this culture broth has to be prepared initially while performing the riddle walker test and after the preparation of this culture broth, we need to autoclave the culture broth. So, the step number one is the preparation of this culture broth, preparation and sterilization of the culture broth. Now, coming to the next step. Now, we need two different solutions. Number one is a standard phenol dilution and second one is the test dilution. So, standard phenol dilution, we know that the efficiency of the phenol is best at the dilution of 1%. So, generally, we used to take 1 is to 100 proportion as the phenol dilution and 
whatever the test solution or whatever the unknown solution that need to be tested, we prepare different concentration. Say for, say for example, 1 is to 1000, 1 is to uh, 1100, 1 is to 1200, 1 is to 1300 and so on. So these are the two preparations that initially we have to do. First, we have to go for the preparation of the culture broth. And second, we have to prepare dilution, number one of the phenol. And number two is of the test disinfectant. Now, when all these things are ready, what we have to do? In the next step, we have to make the arrangements of various test tubes. Okay, as you can see in this diagram, initially in the first track, we have capped the test dilutions and the dilution of the phenol okay as you can see in this diagram we have put 1 is to 1300 dilution that we have prepared in the first tube then 1 is to 1200 then 1 is to 1100 then 1 is to 1000 and at the extreme right we have to put the selected dilution of the phenol and generally the selected dilution of the phenol is 1 is to 100 so this is the first set of tubes that we need to prepare before starting the riddle walker test now, when these all these test tubes are ready with unknown dilution and the dilution of the phenol, what we have to do? In the next step, we have to take the culture of Salmonella typhi. That is the standard culture that is used for the riddle walker test. So we need to uh, have an active Salmonella typhi culture and at time 0, we have to put 0.2 ml of this culture into the first tube that consists of the highest dilution of the test disinfectant. As you can see in the arrangement, first we have kept the high, highest dilution, then the lower one and at the end we have the lowest dilution and in the extreme right we have the phenol dilution. So initially what we have to do, we have to take the culture of the Salmonella typhi and we have to put 0.2 ml of this specially prepared culture into the first tube that consists of the highest dilution of any unknown disinfectant or any test disinfectant. Now after inoculating that 0.2 ml of the Salmonella typhi culture, we have to wait for 30 seconds. After 30 seconds, again we need to add 0.2 ml of Salmonella typhi culture into the next tube that consists of the lowest dilution that is 1 is to 1200 of the unknown okay then again we have to wait for 30 seconds and after 30 seconds again we have to put 0.2 ml culture into the third tube that consists of 1 is to 1100 dilution then again we have to wait for 30 seconds then we have to again add 0.2 ml of this salmonella typhi culture into the test tube that consists of 1 is to 1000 culture then again we have to wait for 30 seconds and at the end again we have to add 0.2 ml of this salmonella typhi culture into the phenol tube that consists of the selected dilution of the phenol say for example 1 is to 100. And after the inoculation of 0.2 ml of the culture into the phenol tube then again we have to wait for 30 seconds. So if you calculate the time spent or the time consumed for the first tube uh, after the inoculation of the last tube, so it is exactly the 2.5 minutes because at time 0 we have started the inoculation. Then we have wait for 30 seconds, then again we have waited for 30 seconds, again 30 seconds, again 30 seconds and again 30 seconds. So at the end of this 30 seconds we can say that the first tube in which the highest dilution of the test disinfectant is placed, it spares around 2.5 minutes. So, at this time, after waiting for 30 seconds after the inoculation of the phenol tube, what we have to do? We have to prepare different culture tubes that consist of the culture broth. Maybe means we need to go for the arrangement of different tubes and in that tube we have to put the uh, culture broth that we have prepared and autoclaved. Now, after this 30 seconds, when we add salmonella typhi in the phenol tube, what we have to do, we have to take a loop full of the culture from the first tube and we have to put that uh, loop full of culture into the first tube. Because 
when we calculate the time spared by the first tube is actually 2.5 minutes means your disinfectant and salmonella typhi has spent it around 2.5 minutes in the first tube so when the 2.5 minutes of interaction between the salmonella typhi and the test disinfectant took place then what we have to do we need to find out the result of that interaction because we know that what are disinfectant disinfectant are the solution that uh, reduces or destroy any pathogenic microorganism so here actually what we are arranging in the first test of uh, test tube is we are we have arranged the disinfectant test and the phenol and we are adding the pathogenic microorganism that is salmonella typhi so because of the exposure of this pathogenic microorganism with the disinfectant definitely the result will be what that the microorganism will be killed but we need to judge we need to assess that after which particular period of time yeah at what period of time these microorganism are actually completely destroyed okay so what we have to do when this 2.5 minutes is over what we have to do we have to take a loop full of the culture from the first tube and we have to put into the uh, again uh, arrangement of the tubes that consist of the culture broth then after putting the loop full of culture into the first tube again we have to wait for 30 second then again we have to take a loop full of culture from the second tube that consists of salmonella typhi and the test disinfectant in the concentration of 1 is to 1200 then again we have to wait for 30 second and this process has to be continued till your phenol tube the interaction of the phenol with the salmonella typhi has already spared 2.5 minutes so once the last tube will be inoculated again we have to wait for 30 second so what we can see here like this arrangement this set of test tube arrangement is actually the indication of what the it is the indication that the disinfectant and the salmonella typhi has interacted with each other for how much duration of time yes definitely it is for 2.5 minutes okay so at the end of this 30 second again we have to prepare one new row of tubes that again consist of what the culture broth which is already autoclaved so what we have to do like after this arrangement again we have to take the loop full of the solution that is around maybe around 0.1 ml from the first tube and we have to go for its inoculation into the uh, first tube of the second row so when we are doing this type of again we are doing the same thing as we have done in the first set of tube then what here we can say that when the when we are inoculating a uh, loop full of culture from the first tube into this tube or in the second set what we can assess now the interaction of the salmonella typhi with the test disinfectant has now spared how much amount of time definitely yes it is 5 minutes because 5 minutes is this much duration of time when first tube has spared 2.5 minutes then again in this set it has spared 2.5 minutes now the first tube the interaction between the salmonella typhi and the disinfectant has now crossed how much uh, time definitely it is 5 minutes so we have to continue this type of inoculation again from this Uh, tubes that consist of the test disinfectant and the selected phenol disinfectant, and this set is actually representing the interaction of the phenol with the disinfectant. Phenol, sorry, the, the disinfectant with the salmonella typhi for five minutes. So this is actually the result of two point five minutes interaction. This is actually the result that represents the five minutes interaction between the salmonella typhi and the disinfectant. And again, we have to repeat the same procedure. Then this uh, rack will represent the uh, duration of time between the salmonella typhi and the disinfectant as seven point five minutes. And the last arrangement will designate the exposure time of the uh, pathogenic microorganism with disinfectant as ten minutes. So these tubes are very important because this is actually the rack in which we have put the uh, disinfectant solutions and the selected solution of the phenol. But the result of interaction between the phenol or any other disinfectant with the phenol, uh, with the uh, salmonella typhi can be judged by inoculating the uh, resultant solution into the culture media because we know that this culture media or the culture growth uh, culture growth will favor the growth of the microorganism. 
So what we have to do, we need to assess that after to sparing 2.5 minutes, what is the result of that interaction? After sparing 5 minutes, what is the result of the interaction? After sparing 7.5 minutes, what is the result of interaction? And after sparing 10 minutes of interaction between the disinfectant and this ammonia typhi, what is exactly the result? So, at the end, when we go for the inoculation or preparation of all these tubes, what we have to do? We have to put all these tubes for uh, incubation at 37 degrees centigrade for around 24 to 48 hours. After 24 to 48 hours, we again we have to take out uh, the rack of tubes from the incubator and we need to identify, we need to identify the presence of the growth in every tube. Maybe we can go for the use of the turbidometric method that will be very easy to identify the presence of the microorganism or maybe it will represent the increase in the turbidity if the disinfectant is not able to kill the microorganism. So we have to take out the turbidity of all these tubes and we need to identify the tubes in which the growth is actually taking place and the tubes in which the growth has stopped. So if the growth is taking place, say for example in the 2.5 minutes we are observing that all these tubes are showing the growth of the Salmonella typhi. So what we can say that because these are actually showing the growth just because the disinfectant and the Salmonella typhi within 2.5 minutes is not capable for killing the uh, microorganism. Maybe in the rack of 5 minutes, maybe in the rack of 7.5 minutes, we can catch particular tubes which is not having the signs of any growth. And if there is no sign of growth in any tube, so what is exactly our assessment? That the growth is not observed just because the disinfectant, maybe the test disinfectant or maybe the phenol disinfectant has killed all the microorganism that we have inoculated. So it means our disinfectant or the test disinfectant is actually working in this particular period of time or at that particular concentration. Okay. So we need to identify, we need to go for the preparation of a table and in which we have to um, chop down various pluses and the minuses. It means uh, where the growth is observed, we have to write plus and when growth is not observed, we have to write minus. So how you can uh, see this table? So in the first, we have added the disinfectant. In the second row, we have added the dilution and then 2.5 minutes, 5 minutes, 7.5 minutes and 10 minutes of exposure. Okay. So our first disinfectant is a phenol that is the standard one and which dilution we have used? We have used 1 is to 100 dilution. Okay. So maybe in the 2.5 minutes we have observed the growth. Maybe in the 5 minutes we have observed the growth. But in 7.5 minutes we have not observed the growth. So uh, in 7.5 minutes for example it is not showing the growth. Then definitely in 10 minutes also it will not show the growth. Okay. So the similar type of observation we have to create for the unknown disinfectant also. We, as in the uh, initial stages we have prepared different dilution of the unknown disinfectant as 1 is to 1000, 1 is to 1100, 1 is to 1200, 1 is to 1300. So whatever the observations are available we have to write in the form of the pluses and the minuses. If the growth is available then we have to write the plus and when the growth is not available we have to write the minus. Okay. Then, there is one standard formula for calculating the riddle walker coefficient, okay? So first I will read that formula. It is the dilution of the unknown which kills in 7.5 minutes but not in 5 minutes, okay? Again I am repeating, it is the dilution of the unknown which kills uh, to whom? That is it kills the salmonella typhi in 7.5 minutes. Means it is able to kill the salmonella typhi in 7.5 minutes but not in 5 minutes divided by the dilution of the phenol which kills in 7.5 minutes and not in 5 minutes. It means we need to identify the tube which is showing the absence of the growth in the 5 minutes which kills the microorganism in 7.5 minutes but not in 5 minutes. Okay. So as you can see in this table what we, what is our observation like if you look at the dilution 1 is to 1200. If you look at this particular table, then what you will find that it is actually the dilution which is 1 is to 1200 which is showing this particular result that the unknown which kills in 7.5 minutes which kills in 7.5 minutes but not in 5 minutes. Okay. So here what is our exact dilution that is 1 is to 
1200 is the uh, set dilution or the result that is showing the most promising result in terms of the disinfection okay so this is actually the dilution which is not showing which which is which is actually killing the microorganism in 7.5 minutes but not in 5 minutes okay divided by the dilution of the phenol and which dilution we have chosen we have already chosen the dilution that is 1 is to 100 okay so again what we have to do we have to divide 1200 with 100 so result is 12 so for this particular case what we have what is our observation that in this particular case the value of the Riedel Walker coefficient is 12 and as discussed earlier if the value of any disinfectant comes greater than 1 then it is said that the uh, given disinfectant or the test disinfectant or the unknown disinfectant is having a better potential as compared to that of the phenol and if the value is less than 1 then definitely it is poor as compared to that of the phenol. So in this case study what is our observation if the riddle walker coefficient is coming 12 it means the test disinfectant or this particular case we can say that it is having a better property as compared to that of the phenol. So this is how we can go for the calculation of the reader walker coefficient for any unknown or test disinfectant. Thank you so much.